SCP-682 lies still as SCP-053 slides down its back like a playground slide. The little girl runs freely, unbothered by the bodies strewn all over the place. Some appear painfully contorted, some with hands at each other's throats, while others with fatal wounds on their bodies. Similarly, she is unaware of the Foundation personnel's predicament. Catch me, mister! <laughs> Catch me! Negative. Do not, I repeat, do not initiate contact with 053 and keep your distance. <laughs> I don't want to lose another man again. Hard to believe that all of this was caused by a child wanting a simple hug. The immortal lizard lies on the ground. It observes the girl as she runs free, keeping away from the arms of the men who were trying to retrieve her. Sure enough, the MTF succumbs to 053's anomalous effects. One of them points his gun at the leader and pulls the trigger, killing him instantly. He then turns towards the girl with malicious intent, only to die of heart attack instantly. The lizard never ceases to be amused by the sight of this. Silence, finally. Its monstrous orbs close gently as 682 peacefully embraces sleep. Guided by the Sandman, dreams begin flooding its mind. A familiar yet distant sight, memories from when the dreaded SCP-682 hard-to-destroy reptile was a young hatchling, and back when the universe was brighter and much bloodier. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you a tale from the SCP Foundation. Atunti has been around since the beginning of the universe, inspiring legends of mighty dragons, leviathans, and great serpents since the days of man sharing epic tales around the fire. At the earliest moments of existence, Azib, one of the seven brides of the Scarlet King, birthed the embodiment of destruction itself. Welcome to the world, my child. You will become the precursor of chaos, a child befitting your father, the great Scarlet King. You will stand tall among your siblings, and as you grow and mature, your appetite will only be satiated when you consume all life. Born as a pulsating orb of flesh, made of jutting teeth and scales, rather than any creature, its form more so resembled a recently removed tumor. By then, it could already speak. Tell me, mother, where is my father, the great Scarlet King? The young abomination coos as it moves closer to its parent, seeking warmth and comfort. It presses itself desperately, only to find a deathly, cold touch. Upon the summit he awaits, you and the rest of your siblings, each birthed from a different mother, but all share a shard of your father. I possess kin? Young Atanti tries to snuggle up to its mother once more, but yet again felt only emptiness in her caress. Perhaps a twisted showing of affection, the mother tries to soothe her baby by dragging her cruel claws across the newborn's flesh. My dearest child, remember this pain, for it is the pain you shall deliver tenfold unto your enemies, unto all lives. You have the only family that matters, the family that stands at the end of time. How can I seek out. Time is fickle, especially to you, my child. Some have yet to be born, while others are already by your father's side, marching towards the Tree of Knowledge. The youngster then gazes up at its mother. However, it cannot see her, for her visage has now become one with the void, vanishing slowly into the darkness. Perhaps dreams are the same for all creatures, even the hard-to-destroy reptile, short-lived and difficult to grasp and hold on to. The more it struggles to remember, the faster the dream fades. Then it was darkness. All alone in eternal darkness, the would-be personification of mayhem has yet to take shape. After its mother's abandonment, it now knows only hunger. When the first sentient being felt fear, a tunti began to take shape. Simple features formed, a long mouth with sharp teeth like swords, a powerful scaled body that can repel the strongest lance. 
fast and agile legs that allow it to cross great distances. A weapon of pure terror and destruction, perfectly designed by the universe. Azib returns, seeping into the lizard's dream once more, this time a proud mother. Wonderful, my child. A leviathan you have become. Exactly what you were meant to be. With your gifts, you will fear no weapon nor magic. You will heal from any injury, for your hide will shield you. But take heed, you are not impervious. Will you abandon me again, brother? Yes, my child. We are beings of the beyond, untethered and unbound. The young child roared in anguish and pain upon hearing its mother's words. It was the first time a Tunti had ever felt hatred, the unrelenting emotion that would go on to become its driving force for millennia to come. Only when the whole of creation is gone will this feeling of hatred towards me, this hatred towards anything and everything, vanish. Until then, farewell, my Leviathan. Azib returns to the void for the last time, never to be seen again, leaving Atunti in its grief, yearning, pain, and pure, unadulterated wrath. We return to present time Earth. While 682 continues its slumber, a backup MTF unit arrives to the scene. All right, man, stay low and move slow. Our priority is the little girl. <laughs> 682 seems dead asleep. <laughs> will flank close to the tail. As if sensing their presence, 682's massive tail suddenly sweeps in a wide arc, swiftly wiping out the entire unit. 682 was unaware of its actions, however, for it remained occupied in its trip down memory lane. 053 finds her reptilian playmate's sleepwalking tricks and music as she giggles gleefully. The creature's eyes seem to be twitching faster now. Family, the one thing currently on its mind, seven siblings from seven mothers, and one father. That slimy orange blob is always hanging around with humans. That thing loves all life to down the much. It sickens me to the core. I don't understand how it's related to me. 682 recoils in disgust as SCP-999, the tickle monster, came to mind. A formless creature made of pure benevolence. Originally prophesied as the ender of worlds, 999 became the antithesis of the very nature of the Scarlet King's offspring, seeking to bring comfort and joy to those around it. And it's destined to bring down its father. How fate enjoys irony sometimes. Another familiar face floats into mind. Softly, 682 calls out the designation given to her by the humans. SCP-053. It's the young girl accompanying the immortal lizard on its rampages as of late. Whoever comes into contact with her goes berserk and will start attempting to harm others. <laughs> and ultimately, themselves. She makes for an excellent battle companion, 682 thinks to itself. In reality, the merciless reptile enjoys her company, a sentiment it guards closely and would never <laughs> confess openly. Suddenly, a titanic shadow looms over the girl. It's SCP-2317-K, Devourer of Worlds, a being the size of the moon. Ah, the Devourer, the light in the Father's eyes. The one destined to devastate all planets. I fought beside him at the Tree of Knowledge and fought against him for thousands of years as he claimed glory for himself. 682 watches as the Devourer struggled and strained itself to break free of the final chain holding it back. Seven chains prior that bound it broke, and catastrophes followed for each. The impending rupture of this last chain heralds the release of the Great Devourer, threatening unparalleled devastation upon countless planets across the universe. 
Though not one of its kin, 682 recalls an unseen ally fighting by the Scarlet King's side. A formless plague that spreads, infects, then twists and turns its foes into gloopy, fleshy abominations. SCP-610, the humans called it. The flesh that hates. I have sensed it in my mind once in a while, consuming and adding to itself. It now lies dormant in a cold, white place, waiting for hell to break loose. And in fact, the world, I find it cowardly. Having said that, 682 can't help but to respect 610's work as an agent of chaos. I certainly enjoy the taste of its infected victims. Currently, the situation is peaceful. No one else to disturb the creature's rest. The lizard lies asleep still, while the girl waits patiently for her reptilian guardian to rise. <laughs> the dream continues. At the center of the universe, a bloody battle rages on under the tree of knowledge. Atunti stands tall and proud on the battlefield as the formidable Leviathan. How I long to return to the old world, a world of perpetual torment and bloodshed. None of this harmonious, bloodless and boring world of man, hiding behind facades. The Scarlet King and his vast army march upon the Tree of Knowledge, in all his wrath and in all his spite. Here, his forces are to lay siege and plant rot into the tree. Once the tree falls, all creation shall follow. However, Atunti cared not for the tree, nor his father's conquest. It lives only for the thrill of battle and the joy of violence. It was magnificent. An age of pure chaos and violence. Millions perished under my claws and jaw. I revel in its memory still. The terroring of flesh and dying screams of those who dared stood against me. Among the misshapen monstrosities, the Leviathan stands out. His shape stood tall and mighty among the rank and file. Here, the hard-to-destroy reptile is a leader, a god of destruction. I was akin to a godly being, not some enclosed animal for man to study. The ground shook with my every step. My very breath burned and brought death. But now, feebly urban spoke at me with flashing trinkets, and pits me against lesser creatures in their pitiful little coliseum while they watch. How humiliating. The lizard can't help but to lament the loss of its former glory. As it watches its leviathan self-reveling in the slaughter, the dream begins to shift yet again. Darkness surrounds it once more. Atunti roars defiantly before the battle in front of it fades away into nothingness. Wake up, sleepyhead! A loud snore from the slumbering leviathan in response to the petite being's wake-up call. Please wake up. I'm lonely. Its eyes open slowly as it growls in reluctance, shaking itself awake. 682 then draws its snout close to 053. Don't be like that. You're always sleeping or eating. Now that you're awake, play with me. It yawns sleepily, its cavernous jaws stretched wide and open before closing and exhaling through its nostrils. The warm air blows the little girl's dress and hair back. Ew, I need a bath. <laughs> 053 tilts her head at 682 with a curious expression. This is the first time I hear you laugh. Yes, I do do that, especially after a nap or a good killing. Did 
Did you have a nice dream? Down. The creature lowers itself onto the ground, allowing the girl to climb atop. A dream it was. So I wouldn't call it nice. 682 surveys the area and spots a weakened wall with small holes, sunlight seeping through. Did you have fun playing with humans? Hey, tights. 053 braces herself. A loud crash follows as the pair broke through the wall. Yes, more people in funny clothes came to play. They wanted to play with you too, but you were sleeping. Then you made them disappear with a magic trick. Oh, did I? That's nice. Let's make a stop here. The pair are now in a dense forest. 053 slides down and looks around curiously. The girl and the beast begin walking at a slow pace, further into the woods, as the sun slowly sets behind them. Did they suffer? I, uh, I think so? The young girl and her guardian, hard to destroy reptile, disappear into the forest. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Have a favorite SCP you want to see on this channel? Leave us your suggestions in the comments down below. In the meantime, if you'd like to see more SCP content, then check out some of our other videos right here. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye.